Welcome back. It's day five of the Bliss Kiss Gold Standard Challenge. And today's topic is how to grow longer nails. And the hint is we need to stop breaking them because our nails never stop growing. We just need to figure out all of the tips and tricks and things that we can do to stop breaking them. Is a break going to happen? Yeah, probably. But we're going to significantly reduce the number of breaks that you have. Number one, find the best nail length for you. As much as some of us want really long nails, our lifestyle might not make that happen. Uh, all of the hobbies and the things that we like to do, they can get in the way. So let's talk about that a little bit more. One of the things to really kind of keep in mind is like Mother Nature has its cycles and uh, so do our nails. And hopefully what we're trying to do is get them to the point of growth, to the point where we want, and then figuring out how to maintain that so that we don't end up with more broken nails. So we sort of look at this as a, it's a nail growth life cycle. And so we've got our springtime when things are just starting to grow, when they're really short, and then it moves into summer and your nails are starting to get really nice and you're happy with them. And then some things might happen and you start to get little peels or little breaks and you're just like, oh, I'm starting to feel like I'm in autumn or fall, uh, however you say it. And then, you know, kind of during winter, everything gets dry and crispy and it's, uh, it's, yeah, things break. Things break a lot during the winter. And actually a lot of our nails will break during the winter also. So kind of think about what season are your nails in right now? Are you just right at the beginning? Um, so you're in spring or are you really happy with where they are in the summer? Or are things started sort of starting to get kind of dicey and you're in, in you're entering autumn? Um, and then of course, if you've gotten a big break or something like that, it is you're in winter again. And just know that the seasons continue and that you will be back into summertime in no time. Okay, so here's some really interesting tidbits about nail growth. Um, the nail plates on each finger grow at different rates. Most of us kind of think that they're the same, but nope. Uh, it takes about four to six months for your nails to completely replace themselves. So from cuticle line to the free edge, where it becomes the free edge at the hyponychium, that takes, for most people, about four months. If your nails grow really slow, it might take up to six months. Also know... And you guys have probably figured this out. Our nail plates grow 20% faster during the summer. Why do you think that is? Well, during the summer, we don't get cold. We don't get cold hands. And so when you have warm hands all the time, you've got more blood flow. And so when you have more blood flow, your nails grow better. So this, a lot of people experience this if you live in a colder climate and then you go to the tropics and suddenly your nails are growing like crazy. And that's why. Okay. Uh, this one we kind of all seem to know is that nail plates grow faster during pregnancy, which is great if you get pregnant, <laughs> if you choose to get pregnant. But it's temporary. As soon as you have the baby... And then everything just starts falling apart. You know, you lose your hair, your nails break, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, also know that nail growth starts to slowly decline after age 20. So kind of after you've hit baby making years, things start going downhill. And um, because we're basically mother nature is trying to get us off the planet. So anyway, um, just know that your nails are going to start growing slower as you get older, that's okay. And this is a really interesting tidbit. Nail biting or accidental damage actually causes your nails to grow faster. Not a great strategy because you'll never see it, but the body does know we need to fix this to protect the nail bed as quickly as possible. So let's recap. 
there are seasons of your nail growth. And like this photograph is great. You'll start from ground zero, especially if you've been biting. Um, and then what we consider nubbins is kind of like right when you're starting to get a free edge. And then you can see the rest are my nails. And day one was when I did a challenge and I started with them very short for me. And then by day 56, they were a medium length. And actually that's about what I've got going on here. Uh, and day 111, um, which was the day before I was like, I know that they're going to break. So this is really key to understand what is what what is the length that's getting dangerous like you're getting into the danger zone of mm, a break is imminent if i'm not really careful or all i have to do is just shorten them a little bit so um and like this example uh actually those mediums are a little bit long for my lifestyle now so let me talk a little bit more about that i know i've talked about it in previous days but you know a lot of this is just if we hear it multiple times then it starts to sink in so really looking at what is the right nail length for you and your lifestyle and you've got the only way to figure it out actually is kind of getting them longer and then you you end up breaking one and you're like well that's a problem um and maybe i need to keep them just a little bit shorter so like i keep mine shorter because i have a horse now and i do a lot of gardening which i absolutely love but that's tough on the hands so i wear gloves for everything and i have to keep them shorter so just remember that we're, we're considering our lifestyle. Um, we talked about this before of your stress level, your health, your home, what's going on in your home, um, your work and your hobbies. All of these things play into the things that actually cause your nails to break or to continue to grow. Okay. Big important one, if you don't already know this, you're gonna hear me say it over and over and over. Water, 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 water. Number two is reduce the amount of water absorption in your skin and your nails. So here's the, the problem is that we need to wash ourselves. We need to use water, but water and soaps and all the wonderful things that we love, um, those strip the oils from our skin and our nails. And so we need to replenish that because we've taken away the body's natural oils. So let's look at this one. This is kind of what got me started in all of this is actually this photograph. Um, when I did a test of what my nails looked like before I took a shower and then afterwards because I was really trying to figure out how do I get my polish to stop take chipping off in the shower. Well, if you take a look at this photograph, you can actually see that I have a very strong C curve. And when the nails have absorbed water and they absorb it from the top and the free edge and the bottoms, um, that actually the, the nail plate swelled and flattened. And then I realized, and then after the water evaporates, then your nail curls again and it curls drier. So I realized, oh, that's probably what's causing my polish to keep chipping is because of that flexing, you know, tightening and then flexing and polish just doesn't want to do that very much. So realize that your nails absorb one third their weight in water. Doesn't sound like much, but it's actually a lot and the nails can soak up water easily enough to mess things up in 60 seconds of water exposure. So Doug Shoon, author of Nail Structure and Product Chemistry, he says, if your nails have been exposed to one minute of water, they need to dry for an hour. Now, if they've been exposed to five minutes, that does not mean five hours. It's just that it's that little bit of time actually makes that big of a difference. Okay, so I talked about this before, and remember that water, it's kind of like the, the pages of the book, that water gets in these layers and it just starts pushing them apart. 
So water is a big problem. Okay, number three. We, it, strong nails, healthy nails that don't break are a combination of actually several things. And one of them is hardness, but the most important too is how do we make them stronger, but also increase the flexibility? That's the trick. <laughs> and of course, you're starting to probably get the idea here. It's hydrate, it's replace the oils that we keep washing away. And so you want to hydrate with a good, high quality jojoba wax ester based nail oil. And you wanna do that at least twice a day. So that would be right before you get out of bed and right before you go to sleep. But you're washing your hands during the day. So you are probably going to need more oil um, on your nails and your skin during the day. Remember that key to all of this is the Bliss Kiss Ultimate Nail Care Routine. And you've seen the image before, and I'm just gonna revisit it, but you want to start with your Mega Hydration Treatment for several hours, and then do the Fab Five Polish Wrap, then massaging in your oil daily, then removing your polish as quickly as possible, and that's why you wanna use the Soak and Swipe Clips, because you don't want to be scrubbing polish off and that dries your nail plate even more plus it's driving the pigments into the top surface of your nail plate so you want to use the soak and swipe clips so all you're doing is pushing putting cotton here at, with acetone and then you let it sit for about a minute and it's and then you just swipe it right off so it's super easy and super quick and then of course once you've done that we want to replace the oils a little bit so we're going to do a mini hydration treatment and then you're right back into the fab five wrap number four so i alluded to this a little bit in the last slide number four let's keep our nails polished it's so important because polish protects from uh, water absorption it get, provides temporary strength and so it's really, really important. And when people say, oh, you need to give your nails a break, no, no. Well, you need to give them a break to give them more oil. That's it. Okay, so remember that one of the keys is the Fab Five Polish Wrap. And that is, let me recap that, two layers of base coat wrapped all the way around the tips, okay? Two layers of color coat that is not wrapped because it's pain to clean up and then one coat of top coat wrapped all the way around okay then you're going to clean off those smudges and then you're going to oil your nails and your skin okay tip number five oh you're going to hear me say it i know you've heard me say it a lot already and i'm going to keep saying it but you need to wear gloves if you want longer nails you've got to wear gloves to protect your nails and your skin from water and the gloves also are an external barrier. They help keep your nails from getting bent too much while you're doing cleaning and dishes and all of that. And I even wear them in the shower if I have naked nails. So, um, because I like long showers and <laughs> so that dries out my nails and my skin pretty badly. Um, also gloves help prevent the wear and tear on your nails. Um, it also reduces tip wear uh, because, you know, our work, our gardening, our hobbies, uh, what other hobbies, our pets, all of that kind of stuff. It's just wear and tear on our fingernails. Okay, so just remember, glove up to protect your nails. All right, let's go through a bunch of things that we should avoid, you know. Alert, 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 <laughs> danger. Okay, this one's my favorite one. Don't make the bed. I, I Probably every single one of you watching this knows and you've probably broken a nail while I'm trying to make the bed. Like not just pull up the comforter, but like actually put the sheets on and all of that. So um, here's the trick. Get somebody else to do it. I have my husband do it uh, if possible or um, there are these cool things called zip sheets, kind of pricey, um, and the thread count is a little bit lower than I would like, than my personal preference, but I still like them. <laughs> so try zip sheets. And basically, you're, you have your sheet is split in two parts, and so the top part zips, 
and the sides stay on the, the mattress. And, um, and it basically, you just, to change your sheets, you just zip off the top and zip on a new one. It's pretty awesome. And if those are not options for you, then you've got to be really careful about going slow. And I don't mean slow, slow, slow like a turtle. I just mean taking those few extra microseconds to pay attention to what you're doing. Okay, another nail break hazard. Do not do dishes without gloves. I'm sorry. You gotta do, you, you gotta do dishes with gloves. In fact, if you do it long enough, it actually starts to feel wrong to put your hands in water. I know it sounds weird, but it's just like, I almost can't do the dishes, like washing my pots and pans without gloves because it just feels wrong. It feels right when I'm wearing gloves. And these are my favorite. I, it, you know, everybody thinks gloves are gloves are gloves, but these dish gloves that we carry, um, the Pure Comfort gloves by Clean Ones, they have this flocking inside that doesn't fall apart and turn to this powdery, gooey bleh. So uh, we have those in our store and they are my favorite. Okay, another hazard. Do not rush when you are buckling or unbuckling car seats or seat belts. You've got to be really deliberate and pay attention to those um, because if you're not, you're just, you're going to, some little corner is going to get snapped and or bent. And so it's important that you really, really focus on what you're doing. Um, also, for those of you who are dealing with car seats, there's something called the car seat key. And that will actually, it's a great little tool that helps you push that really hard red button. Okay, so I th again, think of this instead, trying to use your knuckle to unbuckle. And if that's not easy to do, you know, have some sort of a tool like a pen or something that can help you push down that crazy button so that you can get yourself out of your car. Do not move too fast. It's really important that we slow down. So instead, try slowing down and leading with your knuckles. Remember that you've got to go slow to grow. Otherwise, you're going to risk a break. Do not reach into your purse, your backpack, your handbag, your computer bag, whatever bag you have. Don't reach into it without looking. Instead, try watching where you're reaching, like open up your bag and look inside. Uh, a lot of people find that if they turn their knuckles and lead with your knuckles instead of your fingers, that they find that they break nails less. I think this is a really helpful tip for people with really long nails, especially if you have long, thin nails. Um, it's definitely important to keep those nails out of the way. Do not rush when you are opening your doorknobs and your door handles. And especially, I've broken so many nails just like this picture where I go to grab a, the car handle and it, my fingers aren't completely on it and they slip and then that pressure causes it to snap. So you definitely want to look where your hand is going when you're opening your car door. So make sure instead try slowing down, moving with intention, watching where your hands go. Do not, do not, do not, do not, do not try to catch something that you've dropped. I have broken so many things trying to catch dogs, bulls, whatever. And I finally learned that for the most part, like unless it's a Ming vase, uh, it's gonna be just fine. And if it's something glass and it breaks, it's okay, it's okay, we can get another one. Uh, for me, it's just a good excuse to go shopping. But um, I've just found that it's easier if as soon as something starts to drop, don't catch it, just go. Just relax and let it happen because that is a fast moving thing or you're moving your hand really fast and it's probably just gonna go bad. Especially like in this picture. And I have gotten several of these kind of breaks and it's 
often from when I actually tried to grab something as it was dropping. So just, it's so much easier to let it drop and clean up whatever breaks. It's all okay because that's painful. Do not open soda or pop cans, whatever you call them. Uh, don't do it with your nails. Don't, just don't. Instead, try using tools, uh, anything that you can grab. I mean, I've got a, a dotting tool here. I would open a pop can with a dotting tool before I used my fingernails. It's really, really important. I mean, we've got, we've got things to help us everywhere, so use tools. Okay, this is a big one, and I am very guilty of it as well. How many of you try to scratch off stickers yeah, don't try to peel off stickers or labels with your fingernails. Uh, there's lots and lots of products to help you. <laughs> um, and as a little tidbit, isopropyl alcohol is great for removing tree sap. Don't know if you knew that, but it works great. Uh, so you want to use other tools, other things that can help you help dissolve the sticky goo so that you can remove those labels. Do not scratch with your nail tips. I know this one sounds really weird, but actually this is what Mother Nature gave us fingernails for, is to actually be able to scratch and grab. Um, but of course that leads to tip wear and then water can get in and then that leads to peeling. So let's not scratch as much. Instead, if I <laughs> grab an orange wood stick, grab a pen, whatever you need to do to help you scratch um, and save your nails. This is one that you may not know, but don't use hardeners, nail hardeners, on longer nails. Even nail strengtheners can be a problem for people with long nails. They're actually very helpful for people with short nails on short peeling nails. Uh, nail hardeners can give you, and especially because if your nails are overly flexible and people with shorter nails, those tips are, are getting uh, more tip wear and bumping into things more. And so the tips are bending. And so that also then combined with water leads to a lot of peeling because your tips are bending a little bit and then water. And so what nail hardeners and nail strengtheners can do is help increase that hardness strength right there on those tips so that they stop peeling and breaking, okay? And then once you get past a certain point, they will actually make it your nails too hard. And then what you'll see, like in this photograph from Julie, is that um, when the nail bends, like this is what happened. I can tell you right now, this is what happened for her. This nail bent and instead of like bending and snapping right at the hyponychium, which is right where the free edge starts, it bends way back there. And that's painful. Um, so it's really important that longer nails have flexibility and that comes from our nail oil. So remember, we want our nails, tough nails are a combination of strong and flexible. So instead, try hydrating. We want to keep those nails more flexible by hydrating them with oil. And here's a PS. Topical products don't make your nails grow faster. So no matter what it says on the label or the bottle or the box, Nothing can make your nails grow faster. Nothing. Nothing can make them grow faster. There's three scientifically proven ways to make your nails grow faster. And we talked about those earlier in the slide that has the nail growth rates. But get pregnant. We know that for sure. Uh, move somewhere warm. And that was goes along with the nails grow 20% faster during the summer. So when you move somewhere warm, more blood flow, nails grow faster. And then, of course, the third one is to damage your nail plate. 
um, and that makes them grow faster too. So there is not one product, even our oil, nothing will make your nails grow faster. Okay, this is a fun one. You want to rock your ridges, okay? If you think about it, like in this photograph, mountains have more dirt than valleys. Well, the ridges have more nail cells than the grooves in between them. So instead of trying to buff down the ridges to match the thinnest part of your nail plate, what we wanna do is sort of help plump up the valleys to match the top of the ridges. So guess what? A ridge filling base coat. They actually should be called groove filling base coats, but then they never would sell um, because it's all about ridges, right? So what is the best ridge filling base coat? I wrote an article over on nailcarehq.com and I've tested several of them. I, it's not an exhaustive list, but uh, it gives you an idea of the testing parameters that I did and so that you can do that for yourself. Now remember, my results are not going to be your results. So unfortunately, we've got to try things and see what works best for us. Okay, so here's a big do not. Be very, very careful with buttons and zippers. I have a terrible time with zippers. So instead, try pants without buttons and zippers. It's a great excuse to wear your comfy lounge pants, right? I wear pajama pants a lot when I'm working in my home office. Anyway, uh, and here's a fun little tip, trick, whatever. If you've got a crochet hook around and you do wear jeans, put that in the restroom, in your bathroom, because you can use the crochet hook to hook the zipper pull. <laughs> That'll help you. Okay, so let's recap. Remember, we want to slow down. We want to pay attention to what we're doing. We want to use tools, not your nails. Remember, your nails are jewels. Do not use them as tools. Um, avoid contact with water as much as possible. And you'll actually start to notice this, that your skin, it just starts to feel dry a lot. If your hands are in water, your skin is gonna feel drier. So you'll feel so much better um, if you minimize the amount of water contact that your skin and your nails have, unless you're just washing your hands. Um, and remember, let things drop. Most things, it's okay if it drops. Uh, and above all else, we've got to hydrate, 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 hydrate. 